Give the table a few more minutes. She's just going out to the ladies who are teaching the Buddhist. Okay. Um, let's just sing one verse of Jesus loves the little children. And then, uh, okay. Jesus loves the little children. Oh, the children of the world. Thank you for being in control of the whole world and everything in it. 
I pray that you will help me to trust you and not do anything that is wrong. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, and we have been talking to our children about prayer and how important it is um, that they pray for each other. So that's the senior Sunday school that our uh, older children. That's their witness to you on prayer. Now, Teacher Richardson will do what she has to do with her children. going to sing, I am a promise. They all know what promise means. What is a promise? What is a promise? Promise is a promise. I do tell them that. It's a poem I wrote for them. I promise is a promise is a promise. As long as you are, keep it the promise. Right? Okay. We're gonna sing I am a promise. Musicians. <laughs>
three point something, and he ended up going to lead his school. He got his bachelor's, and he finally got his master's, and he came back and gave a speech to the same school that he was in. And the teacher said, we never thought this boy would ever get to the far by what he was doing in school. Not that he was rude, it's just that he would walk out of class and stand up in the hall for whatever reason. You know, he was just radical like that there. But they said we never, never thought this guy would do anything with his life. And so now he's married, got the kids and everything. So I'm going to tell you kids, keep pressing. I just want to tell the parents, don't give up. Just don't give up. And, and, and I, I can take it. They, they wouldn't accept it back in high school unless I went with them. And I would drive it up and say, look, what, you hate me or something? Man? Why am I going to be dealing with all of this year? I had a crazy old man, and I'm going to have a crazy son, too. I'm stuck in the middle. Come on, man, treat me right. And um, sure, he caught himself, and he just went ahead and did what he's got to do. Praise God. So don't look at where he is now. Look at what they will become. Amen? And then the most wonderful thing about it now is he's actually preaching the gospel. He just... He's just tearing it up now. You would not know. You would not know. If you think I'm anything, you, you play with Cornelius. Cornelius is old word. He's nothing else. He's old word. And I thank and praise God for his goodness. And so we need parents with stability. You know, we don't get weary. Don't get weary. I don't care regardless of what's going on in this world. It doesn't have to be your child. I'm telling you now, we need pokey mothers. That's right. That's right. I'm a pokey yeah. grandpa. Yeah. If you ain't coming here, I'm going to stay up until you do. That's right. And I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to check you, and I'm going to give you a board plan and everything else. Amen. Trust me. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. In other words, what I do, what I did with my children, I do with my grandchildren, I give them excuse to come home. Gotta give your kids like she's coming home because they don't get to call sisters, they would tease me everything. I know I gotta go home because my old man O'Brien, that guy is waiting up for me. I got to go home. He said, okay, well I'll check your data for they check your data sit down. You better get my excuse to come home. Let them know that you're gonna be waiting for them. They're not sneaking in the house. You're gonna stand right there. That's right. Give them an excuse to come home. I don't know what they're going to do with me. I ain't going crazy. I ain't beat them and all that, but I would talk to them for about an hour. Wear them out. They wish I did beat them. I'm telling you. I, mean, I wish this man would high up with this conversation. I'll talk for a whole hour after the minute. And during the same thing, then it would be two hours. Even people to understand punishment. Punishment comes in all different types of ways. That's right. That's right. You, you act up and like that, though. When your friends come wrong, I'm going to act up. That's what I did. That's what I did. When their friends came wrong, I started acting up. That's right. And they come back to me later, then you know what you did last week that was really embarrassing. Yeah, what I thought was embarrassing. Don't send this woman out of this house. I don't know who she is. She's knocking on my door. Like, Y'all not her? How are you going to treat somebody's child like that, somebody's daughter? You're not treating my daughter like that. Why should you treat somebody else's daughter? And I just go on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> Probably leave her over there and they get it right. Like that, that's going to act up. And if I beat you, trust me, it's not going to be just a beating. We're going to talk about it. You're going to get beat. We're going to read this. We're going to read what the punishment is. Because I'm not going to beat you unless there's an agreement. They can agree with the punishment. If you act up, I'm going to beat you. And then you think if you got an old saddle, you understand it fully, and we're all in agreement that this is how it's going to go, I'm going to beat you again just to make sure. I'll beat you twice. I'm going to save myself for the next time. No, 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 I'm beating you twice. And, and today I got one of the kids. I couldn't ask for anything better. Because one thing you have to understand, one thing I understand, and I'm sure most of you do, whatever you do, if you can do it in love, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm seeing some people, man, who just don't like me, and, and I love them, and try to say whatever, try to be nice, and they're like, what are you speaking to me for, man? For somebody who, who knows that, that you love them, you can talk hard to them, and they'll still receive it. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody don't like you, you can talk nice, and they still act up to you. Because you just got to know how to do it in love. Come on, parents, let's do this thing in love. Come on, I'm, I'm dependent on you, your generation. I'm dependent on them. 
Come on, did you work it up well? And God has given us great guidelines. And so at this time, I would like to ask all the, the graduates, all the young people there in the school, we're going to pray for you. Come to the altar. We're going to pray for you today, this morning, um, that you would have a blessed summer, a safe summer. So everyone, praise God, who's in school, I don't care whether you're in college or wherever, just come on out here. Quickly now, here you go, stand in the front. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, encourage your parents. Yeah, encourage them. Sometimes you can't get along with your teacher, you know. I met some teachers that their style of teaching just did not work for me. And I'm trying to tell them that their style of teaching did not work. So you got to pray for a man that's in there. They have a good teacher message. And so this summer, everything. Brothers, for the 
sitting with a sister. Sometimes the correction doesn't always come from the hearing. But if you can have a brother who is steady firm and say, even though I'm in this mess, don't you come this way. We even got love in our brothers and our sisters. You say, I'm in trouble, but don't you come this. Pray to God that he will speak loud and clear. These are our babies, these are our children, these are our students. From nursery school to university. Hallelujah. We know that the enemy goes about seeking who he may be found. But today, God, the blood, yeah. the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Too many are raised in the church and lost to the world. Hallelujah. Too many might go to here. Ah, I'm just like this in the mind when they come back to and walk by you. Evolution and by big bang theories go hallelujah. And they feel now that they don't need God anymore. God protect their minds. That the teachers that they get in church for stuff and for sin are they saying that they don't understand. For we know that it's better to know you than to know he has. And so when I pray, Lord, that you will give your parents wisdom. I pray, O oh Lord, that you give them understanding and knowledge, Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, that they would ever be concerned, Lord, oh, to go the extra mile and, and not only just let them show the go, but Lord, that they would, Lord, be our guide today. That they would continue to give them good advice, sound advice, Lord, oh, sound doctrine according to thy word. I pray, O oh God, for the fathers today. Ah, the too many lost fathers. We don't need fathers today, but we need spiritual fathers. My Lord, that they can discern always, 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 always. There are too many of a young man dying on the street, Lord. Losing when I go to vision, losing sight of the little morality. They got me to recognize that they're coming, they're lost in a relationship.
celebration within itself. Even though it's not what I consider a total celebration. Because I was meeting some people one Thursday on the day of the voting, and they were telling me that about prophecy that they're not going to participate because things have been prophesied and so it's going to happen anyhow. And of course, I had to tell them, you know, I don't want to be on any team and when they win the cup and I haven't played, I haven't participated. What, what's the sense of me celebrating if I never participate? I can celebrate, but it could be the same as me going out on that court and fighting for that basketball or for that cricket ball or for that football. There's a huge difference in me just sitting on the side block. You know, I want to be, if I'm on the team, I want to be in the game. So when we, when we get a ring, I'm going to say, yeah, you know what I mean? I can tell my grandchildren and my great great grandchildren that I participated, but to say I got a ring and never played, never participated, just so the team knows. Well, what's the sense of you, you having these rights, having these powers, and you don't participate? And you're going to tell me because of prophecies? That's not how the word of God goes. Go tell that, go tell that to Nineveh, people that live in Nineveh. Man, journal eventually and says in 40 days, Nineveh's going to be destroyed. Do you think when they said he prophesied, they go, oh, he's going to prophesy just an even alert? No, those people went and then in sackcloth and begin to fast and they inflicted themselves before God and God turned it around. Yeah. Yeah. And he the nation changed prophecy. No, I don't know why, why we read it. Go tell that to King Hezekiah who told the prophet told him to get your house in order because the night you're going to die. That man turned his face towards the wall and began to cry out to God. And God gave him 15 more years. What are you talking about? Somehow we don't realize how merciful and how God's mercy is coming before his wrath, you know. We better take advantage of his mercy. Come on now. Abraham, he, 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 he interceded for Sodom and, and, and Gomorrah. And he said, what if I find 50 righteous men? Will you destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? He said, not for 50, find 50. He worked it down to 10 and got weary and stopped. Because he didn't fully understand the extent of God's mercy. And the only way you and I can understand the extent of God's mercy, you would read on and you would find that the angels grabbed the hold of Lot and his wife Cooled about and said, we cannot destroy Sodom and Gomorrah as long as you are here. That means that God would not have destroyed it if there was one righteous man there. Tell me that, oh, because it's prophecy that you could just lay back and say, well, it's a prophecy going to happen. No, we and I, we have control of that. There is no sinner that has the privilege to choose his punishment. But he gives it to the righteous. You don't believe me? Go after David. He gave David three choices, David. I know you see it, but this is going to be the punishment. I'm going to give you a choice. David says, Lord, don't let me fall in man's hands. Let me fall in God's hands. You can have choices because you have a privilege as a righteous people. Come on now, hallelujah, Jesus. You think my son, if I'm going to punish him, and he cries out and does right? you think I'm not going to be soft-hearted? It's not going to change me? Come up with some lame excuses, but oh, because it's prophesied, and we can sit back and do nothing. As if, like, God doesn't have a remnant. You know I'm upset, right? You know I'm upset. I like the idea we won, but the fact that we didn't get 50%, which means God and I are still in limbo, they didn't have to be in limbo. If we all would have showed up, they come up and said, you know what? Put a step on it. No, but we want to stay home. And give me this nonsense about, oh, okay, it's prophecy. Yes, it's prophesied. Yes, it's going to happen. But does it have to happen on your watch? And if it's going to happen, why don't we have enough compassion to try to at least salvage those who are going to fall into this? God wants to see some type of passion from us. You can't let the other brothers in the world and go and you stand there for nothing. It's insane having the truth. And they don't do anything with it. Having power and don't do anything with it. And what are you going to complain? The guy is complaining about, oh, we don't put enough energy in trying to help the young man. 
in our argument. But you want to put all this energy in the referendum. But if you don't use your energy for what you do know, why are you sitting there making a promise about things that you don't know? Handle the business when you do know. Deal with that because you're not dealing with this. All the prophets in the world is not going to help you much. You want to deal with something you don't even know is a prophecy in the future. But you're not dealing with what you do know? No, if you have the power, the government give you the power to vote, vote! Vote! So you think there's not now, they're going to feel good about themselves when they find that you didn't reach the 50%? It should bring shame. It should do. I would be ashamed. I would be apologizing to the Lord. You give me this authority and I don't use it. I bear it in beauty. I bear it in my talent. Sometimes I wish I had the opportunity to speak like this before and all of this occurs. Or some people she said, ask me how I feel. And I will tell you. But whatever I tell you is going to be biblical. You can trust that it's going to be biblical. Amen. My bishop asked me to pray for this referendum. And because um, we still don't know what government's going to do. And they shouldn't be in the mood. It should have been affirmed, definitely. No doubt. They got to go to the rest of it. They're the same segments. Listen, this is what the people have spoken. We cannot do anything. It has nothing to do with what the people have spoken. But we leave them to make a decision. The boxer says, don't knock the guy out. Don't leave it to the judge. <laughs> the judge might turn around and make him the villain. No, knock him out now. Don't leave this decision to no judge. Because you don't know what the judges are going to do. They should have been knocked out. Did I tell you I'm upset? <laughs> Because we let good opportunities pass, take things too lightly. Because if it's prophesied that this island is going to suffer some tidal wave, you think I'm going to say, well, okay, go ahead, it's going to be a prophecy, just let it come. No. No, we gotta change our mindset. That's why I say we don't need to be changed, we need to be transformed by the renewal of our mind. That we may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. If you have a transfer mind, and when you try God's will, you're gonna know that it is good, that it is acceptable, and that it is perfect. Father God in heaven. And so many times when we pray, times when we speak, we just try to do whatever we can to speak what's in your heart. I know how you feel about babies and little children. I know how you feel about brothers killing brothers. And I know how you feel when you give us opportunities and we don't take full advantage. It's like the only way you're going to resurrect Lazarus, you know, if you go roll the stone, no, you told us we got to do something to roll the stone away and I'll bring him up. No, 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 you, you want your brother saying then go tell him. You want your sister to bring her father to show us some love. No, no, we, we have to be a part of this team. And so when there is transformation taking other people's lives, we can say, well, we played a part in it and feel good about it to be good enough to go and tell somebody else. Good enough they want to share it with somebody else. And so God, I pray in the name of Jesus. We realize that this is all the enemy's attack. It's an attack on creation. I mean, bang theory is an attack on creation. Evolution is an attack on creation. Same sex marriage is an attack on creation because they're going to say, well, you know what? It was no thing as man and female in the garden. suffer for it. But sin is a reproach to any nation. Sometimes we can't comprehend 
until it's right in our hearts. Hallelujah, Jesus. That we want to kill somebody. But God, I don't know what government has to do. What are the options they have? What choices they will make? But if you can cause the wind to blow, Wind and the waves obey your voice. Hallelujah, Jesus. Since you see things afar, God of action for us. Open grace. That somehow you will bring us to this all, God. Not because we won by a mathematical or statistic event, but that we won because people's lives were changed and they saw the wrong in their ways. Let it be a transformation upon them as well. So God, we ask Lord, that you would continue to keep us in the press. For we know God, that we draw it to the end, the same shall be saved. So let us not get weary in our doing, for in due season we shall weep and we faint not. As we give you all the honor and give you all the glory, saved and sanctified and I'm running for my Lord. Praise God. So we're going to stand at this time and we're going to receive today's offering. And directly after that we're going to have the speaker. Praise God. I, I, I didn't know who the speaker was but now that I know who the speaker is I found that I know the speaker. And so um, I really feel blessed. I feel safe. Praise God. And having Brother Smith with us today. It's going to be an introduction right after the prayer. So let us stay up, praise God. Let us pray.
sent her, her people down here like to praise God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna get my towel and I'll come back and I'll try it again. And just get this ready. I heard people down in Heritage Worship Center love to praise God. Some of my young people graduating, uh, 
Monday and all that kind of stuff. And for all this, graduates, I want to give you a round of applause one more time. Those who are graduating, whether you transition from middle school or you graduated from high school or college, you know, definitely we want to highlight your achievements. And it is most important that we do that as leaders, parents, and those who are in charge of influencing this generation that's coming up. It is important to know that we uh, take time to do that. And I've been doing that uh, down uh, up the country there at Agape, uh, Agape Fire. And what we have, I want to share just briefly, what we have been doing, we have had a campaign uh, talking about I Believe. And uh, with that, uh, we've been uh, sharing uh, what it means to really believe and have a solid foundation, of course, a belief in God definitely being the most important thing, but most practically believing in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who lived the earth in a practical life, who was also a child, did things as a child, and we want to teach these things uh, to them so they understand what it means to live a life as a believer while they are young. They don't need to wait till they get older to understand things. We can teach them things now so that they can grow with the understanding. Y'all are listening to me? Yeah, so it's important that we do that. And we've been sharing, we were sharing out of John's Gospel, chapter 14. You may read it when you uh, go home if you so desire. But in that, in that chapter, we, we find Jesus trying to convince those around him. He starts off, if you know, you uh, uh, believe in the Lord. Uh, uh, yes, let's, 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 And, and, and if you see, see uh, the bishop walk in, you can do the same thing. Praise God. Okay, okay, what I'm doing, you just make a game, all right. Uh, yeah, in John chapter uh, uh, 14, uh, yes, uh, we find in that text, uh, it starts off, you know, uh, um, let not your heart be troubled, uh, you know, if you believe in God, believe also in me. So, so yes. we've been talking about all of that kind of stuff, believing. In God, you know, we, we, we jumped on a whole lot of things. I believe in prayer, you know, I believe in forgiveness, I believe in, you know, all those things. We laid a foundation, and you know, it's important to lay the foundation of, of first of all, having a relationship with God. All right, we, we, we laid that out and we shared how, how important it is to have that solid relationship with God. And, you know, most importantly, uh, we, we had to dispel some things that, that we grow up grow up uh, hearing, uh, we hear often that we are to believe in ourselves, right? And you, we've heard slogans of school about believing in yourself, and yes, you can get yourself ready and believe in yourself. We, we've heard it, we were probably told that, but, but as we have entered into covenant with Christ, uh, our belief in self changes. Because in that same chapter, you'll find that, that Jesus talked about believing in God and then believing in, in me. And he talked about him being in his Father. And then later on, he talks about the Holy Spirit. In that text, you'll find that the Holy Spirit is introduced. We, he talks about introducing the Comforter. And he says that same Comforter will be in you and me, uh, should we believe in him, right? So, so for us as believers, when we talk about believing in ourselves, we're believing about something that's on the inside of us. And that being the Holy Spirit. You're a little puzzled. I'll just say it one more time real quickly. Understand that we as believers, when we talk about believing in ourselves, we're talking about believing in the God that is within us. Which means that we are able to do anything that God has graced us to do. Can I get an amen on that? So it's important to, to, to always be uh, teaching these things, these principles to our young people. And we've been you know, chipping at that all year. And it was a joy to, to share some things. But, but in, in my uh, time of meditation, in my time of study, God, God led me to uh, just kind of divulge a bit into a few things uh, and in preparation for today. Uh, and as my meditation would have me, it took me over to 2 Samuel uh, chapter 22, and uh, verse 29 to 33. I'm going to read that in your hearing. I'm going to read that in your hearing. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 29 uh, to 33. You can write it down. We've got your pens and, and papers and what have you. You can take some notes. We're going to teach a little bit and we'll see what God does from there. Amen? Amen. 
Amen, amen. Second Samuel 22, 29 to 33. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and to read this while well, you get it. Second Samuel 22, uh, 29 to 33. For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a tree. By my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? God is my strength and power. Somebody say power. And he maketh my way perfect. I'm going to read the last part right there. God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. I just want to share briefly with you, I've got the power. I've got the power. I've got the power. Now, uh, for some of us, we might uh, be very schooled in our uh, musical knowledge and if knowledge will serve me correctly because because before I got saved I was very heavily involved in music I worked in uh, Dub City Records for some of you who may know uh, you know that was uh, a time where I, I spent time there working you know my family uh, owned the store so as a young man I was there all the time with, with reggae music and exposed to a lot of music and, and all that kind of stuff you know uh, shout out to the DJ up top. I see you, and um, you know we we um, you know we know, know, know a lot of music, a lot of music. There's a song uh, I believe I can't remember the uh, 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 the, the the artist, but the song said I got the power. Uh, it's a old uh, house type of song, uh, and the song you know had a hook it was really just catchy. You were here, you see every day. Playing in the club, people used to bop and dance, do all that kind of stuff to, to I know some of y'all in here, you know, they you know exactly what I'm talking about. They're just being quiet, you know, see, 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 Bobby, you know, if I would have known that it was you, Sonny, I wouldn't have had on this tight suit, you know, I'd have came my joggers and I watches like the young bishop over there, and I'd have been, you know, appropriately dressed for, for this kind of setting. But means that, you know, we are here. <laughs> And so, you know, this uh, song I remember very, very strongly. It talked about, I've got the power. And then in the hook, it said, it's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of heavy. Yes. Oh, I'm not somebody. Yeah, see, see, see. I heard some yeses out there. I know I'm not by myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know I'm not by myself. But, you know, you know not that you, you were in the whole thing. I'm just talking. It's all right. It's really okay. We're just talking. Yeah, okay. You know. And so, uh, what 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 we have been taught over the years is that you know uh, 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 we can really uh, believe in the things that we do. All right, we have the, the the ability to do a lot of things, and we have been taught over the years that those things we are to get behind and push. Now, I am not opposed to that at all. I'm definitely not opposed to it. Um, in fact, uh, I am one who who really believes in pushing uh, those who have great abilities and what have you. But before we get into things, one thing that I, that I was told by one of my mentors is that, uh, uh, he, said, uh, he said it like this, he said, what cannot be defined cannot be determined. So if we don't define the things that we uh, got out in front of us, the things that we are teaching, if we don't really properly define stuff, we won't know how to use it right. Y'all got that? For example, if you uh, get a new phone, Right, new phone. What's the next, what's the next new phone? I7? <laughs> I7? I7 probably come out in October. S7? S7? No, I, I'm not, I'll do Samsung. I7. I, 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 no, this, I, I like, I like, I like. Apple. So, um, you know, you think I'm about an Apple, but I don't, right? But anyway, <laughs> I7 comes out, right? And of course, we know that uh, with that, uh, we, we really, we rarely read the instructions. To, to, to our phones, you know, we, we just pick a body and we just start playing with them and, you know, we just figure it out a little bit, right? Uh, unfortunately, we do miss out on some things because we really don't take time out to read out what the manufacturer put inside the instructions so that we can adequately use the phones properly. Mm -hmm. Y'all got that? I know I said it fast. 
So, so for most times, we miss out on the power that the film has because we don't know what's going on with it because we didn't read about the instructions first. Are you all with me still? Yes. So oftentimes, we do not define stuff and we operate without any clarity on what's going on. So for simple things such as these two thoughts I'm going to share with us tonight, one being power and the other being ability. Power and ability. Say that with me. Power, power. Ability. ability. Power, power. Ability. ability. Now, when we look at the word power, uh, we find that it means a few things, and I'm going to just highlight a few of the things that power is defined by. Okay, power, power, uh, the ability to do something mm -hmm. or act in a particular way, especially uh, as a faculty or a quality. Right? Okay, it's something pretty simple, right? Uh, you know, that's, that's power. Uh, in fact, you heard the word ability in the definition of power. Did you not hear that? Let me read that again. The ability to do something. So let's just stop right there. We don't have to get too deep. All right, so, so really on the surface, uh, we find ability is connected to power. All right, that's on the surface there. All right, now let's look at ability. Now let's look at the definition of ability. All right, now ability simply says uh, possessing, possessing, or the possession of the means or skill to do something. All right, uh, having the ability to do something. Uh, other words that you and I might use might be potential. All right, uh, capability. All right, are y'all still with me? All right, aptness or means, the means to do, ability. Uh, also in there is the word power in the same definition. So, so uh, in my study, uh, the Lord directed me specifically to those two words, power and ability. And, and at surface, I saw that they were used interchangeably. Uh, with each other, they were used in the same context. But as God started to open this thing up a bit further, he showed me some things that were a little different when it comes to power and ability. Y'all still with me? All right, so let's go a little deeper. Can I go a little deeper? All right, so let's look at it a, 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 a different uh, way. All right, let's go back to power. Somebody say power. Now, now let me look at power again. It talks about the capacity uh, to direct or influence the behavior of others. Mm -hmm. Or the course of events. And uh, the bill definition that the dictionary said, uh, said or the bill example, that they said is the idea that man should have power over women. I'm not going to use that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to use that. <laughs> kind of tight over here. I don't know, right? <laughs> you know, it, it, I'm not going to use it. Nobody has power over here. I'm, not, I'm married now. You know, I don't play over that. No, 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 that's, that's no, no, no. We won't use, we won't use that. Um, the, cap the capacity uh, or uh, the ability to, uh, to influence uh, somebody. That's something that is very serious. When you have uh, been given power on that level, you have the ability to influence on that level. Now, let's look at ability. Now, ability, uh, when you look at it even closer, it says this. It says, it says that uh, uh, ability, uh, meaning a talent, skill, proficient in a particular area, somebody who is exceptional, someone who stands out amongst the rest, somebody who, when you see them walking, you know who they are just by the way they carry themselves. I'm talking about exceptional people. But when I think about that, I think about what the word says about us and how we are a chosen generation of royalty, a royal priesthood, that, that wherever we go, we take the whole of the kingdom of God with us. And with that, that means that we have a responsibility with the things that God has invested in us, not just spiritually, but also naturally. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our natural abilities. And we, in this room, we can look across the, across the hall. We have various jobs. We have positions of influence. In fact, there's someone here who has a great uh, a position of influence in the secular world. I did, I'm not going to call his name, but he has it. And I, did, I just realized who he was. And when I recognized who he was, my attitude changed a little bit. <laughs> I, 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 I shook his hand and, and greeted him. And I'm like, I knew this brother from somewhere. And, you know, he's got a different kind of, kind of uniform. I'm not going to call his name. You know, but, but I just, you know, and then, then I recognized 
actual recollection change of, I, I knew, I knew this guy. I knew where I knew from. But then I got a picture of what he wears. <laughs> and then the authority that he carries. And, and my, my attitude shifted a bit. You can see it shift. It was good on the inside, too. That this person carries some serious power over some persons. And, and you have to understand that, that that person, when he walks around in that uniform, it is different from when he walks around in his suit. So if you understand that, that you and I carry some things just based on the things that we are connected to. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching a little bit already. All right. Uh, uh, understand that there are people in here who, who, who carry certain authorities that, that if you uh, do the wrong thing, they can hold you accountable and put you in places you don't want to go. Y'all yeah. <laughs> looking at me crazy. All right. Anybody act crazy in here, in one second somebody will be here to recommend you quick. Real quick. Why? Because they have and they carry a certain ability and a certain power to exercise. And it's important to note these things that we do have around us in the natural world. All right, we have it all around. We can look at even the sports arenas. All right, we find people that are very influential in sports. People aspire to be people in the sports arenas. We, we, we can look at now, anytime you hear, hear somebody talking, they talk about people that have influenced them from the time before. Everybody aspires in basketball to be like Michael Jordan. It's, it's really that, that, that simple. We want to be like Mike. Mike is the standard when it comes to basketball. Now, of course, we can argue and, and question some statistics now because we have someone who's now on the scene that's finally stepped up to the game and won himself a championship. Shout out to the Cavs and LeBron James. You know, so, so now he uh, is in this place now where he is now considered amongst the greats because he had an aspiration. And now he has influence based on his abilities and the things that he has done. So I'm going back full circle. Why it is important to start to celebrate our young people and their villages? Because one day they are going to grow up with some great influence. So you all might have thought that you were having some regular old service just to pedicate people on the back and pedal. Well done, Johnny. Okay, Sister Sally, you did well. No, you are empowering a generation for greatness in the future. So I really want to take my time to deal with what we are doing here in our community because it is so important that we stop that going around in this country that we empower our young people not just with natural ability but with the spirit. Somebody say the spirit of God. I'm going to get there in a minute. I just need to nail them some stuff first, lady. But I can just, you know, take my time just a little bit. I won't be long. I promise. I promise. I won't be long. <laughs> But I need to highlight some of these things. Now, now here's the challenge out there. Here's the challenge out there, and I want to touch it a bit. Man's wisdom relies on his ability. Man's wisdom relies on his ability. We can go to school and study. We can go and be part of, of, of training that gives us certain skills, that give us a confidence in what we do. And it's important to have self-confidence. You have to be able to at least stand up and believe in what you're doing. Yeah. I believe that. I totally believe in that. And it is most important that we empower our young people to do that. It is important. However, that wisdom or that concept is very limited. Because of our frailties, and the Bible says that we are frail creatures of the dust, prone to get in stuff, prone to come short, prone to failure, Prone to disappointment, prone to upset, that if we totally rely on that, you'll set ourselves up for failure. That's right. You'll set ourselves up for disappointment, depression, all sorts of stuff because we put our trust in our own abilities separate from what God has given us. Yeah. And so we as a people, we need to teach the distinction. But don't leave out the fact that they do have this ability and be celebrated at the same time. It's called balance. The Bible says a just way and the balance are the Lord's. So we must have this balance of understanding and teaching them how to be victorious for real. I'm coming to you in a minute. Man's wisdom. That's man's wisdom. Now, let's look at God's wisdom. Now, 
God's wisdom, when we look at God's wisdom, God's wisdom is a little different. See, God's wisdom relies or realizes or relies on His power. God's wisdom. God's wisdom simply recognizes or God's power is ignited when we give back to whom the power really belongs to. God's power. God's power. The ability to do the omnipotent. Did I get that right? It's a big word. Did I get it right? Omnip the omnipotent? Did I get it? I got it. All powerful, right? I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Just gotta make sure, you know, I'm gonna say anything, Reverend, you know, I wanna make sure I'm saying it right. Omnipotent! Yes. All powerful! Yes. Power! Do the must, do the must power, dying on my power. The power that we have that comes from the Holy Ghost. Yes. I'm talking about God's power. I talked about it in John chapter 14, man. God said he's gonna send you comforter, he's sending you power. Yes. Power! The power is at a limitless measure. Yes. Access to this power, this greatness on the inside of us. And for us to give our young people the idea that they have the power of God living in them is an amazing thing to know. Yes. And we can't get caught up with how the world teaches about their abilities and we not in the church teach them about the power of God. Because when they get sick with a power, they need to know how to lay hands on themselves and tap into the power that's within them. Oh, okay, y'all pray with me today. I can't talk about the power of God. Our abilities are limited. For some reason, we can amount and go after all sorts of things. We can have achievement to the highest degrees. We can get all the degrees in the world. And please, go ahead, go for it. But don't forget about the power that you got from him to get it in the first place. So now, let me just go to my text. Because I don't want to be here too. Now, David, in this small portion of the text, we find him celebrating his victory for his enemies. It's important to deal with the word of God. That's where it is. That's where the power is. And we find David's story very unique and very interesting in our uh, subject of power today because David, if you and I remember, David was anointed early in his years. But before he was anointed, he was out with his ability. He was out as a shepherd boy, with the sheep, tending to the sheep, being all with the sheep. Little boy, doing his thing as a shepherd boy. Now, of course, as a shepherd boy, as one who is a shepherd, he oversaw the flock. That meant he had to protect the flock from all sorts of attacks from animals, sheep, lions, tigers, and birds. And we know in the story that he had that experience where he had to fight lions and fight tigers and all that kind of stuff to keep those, those animals away from his sheep. And of course we know that later on became something he was confident in when it came to fighting Goliath. Yes. So you have to understand that there is a certain ability that you and I must have our confidence in. Well, I'm in the scripture now, you know. Amen. David referenced the fact that he fought the lion. He told the lion straight. I have you a bear and a lion. You will be no different. So what that tells me that there is a certain uh, a confidence that we should have in our abilities, but we have to recognize that because of what enemies we face, we need to know who the power, where the power is coming from, so that we can fight the enemy the right way. Okay. Let me take my time, Uncle Bobby. See, David, David knew that the Israelites had an issue. The issue was that they were fighting with their inability. They were doing what they thought was best. Right? Sword shield, all of that. Had it all laid out. But Goliath kept slapping them left, right, and center. Heard that, back. Yeah, let's heard one of them. Heard another one. You're not wrong. You, you, 
you all are a weak. So he carried on. He was arrogant, the Bible says. Yes, yes. Arrogant, prideful. Yes. Do you know the enemy will be arrogant in your face? That's right. When they're trying to get victory, he really rears his head and tells you you can't make it. Right. He's real bossy. Mm -hmm. so, so God in his infinite wisdom sends a little boy.
because uh, uh, sometimes we look at stuff and we don't think that that's the right tool to be using. Okay, so See, you may look at them with their tool and think that it's inappropriate. But that tool that they have is a tool that somebody else has. When somebody looks at them and say, oh, how are they able to connect with that person? And when they really meet that person with the same stuff on their arm, but the way they speak sounds different, it's over. What am I saying? Insulate instead of isolate. In other words, let them grow. Let them make decisions. If we put the word of God inside of them, they cannot get away. And we need to really trust God with the young people that he has given us. And I say that with a great degree of, of respect because I'm now stepping to parenthood and immediately now I've got this love that just comes from, I don't know, I'm all good and hard over my little boy. So I don't want him to do nothing stupid. Because I understand stuff. But I have to allow him and teach him along the way so that when he gets older, he won't depart from it like I did. Okay. You see, if you're going to be for real as a believer, you're going to tap into the power that's within you. You have the power to model for your children, to demonstrate the authority that God's given you. And when they get out there and think that they can do what they want, it's something about the power of God that wants you. You feel something different on the inside of you that just doesn't allow you to do what you really want to do because you're insulated. You got something in you, and Jesus was so big on insulation because he was trying to tell me, he described the friend, listen, believe also in me. He tried to tell them God's in me. He was so trying to convince him the insulation that he had in him. But they didn't believe it. They, they wasn't used to it. They couldn't see that too that he had at that time. You have to understand and discern the times that we have. So, 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 so fast forward a little bit. Don't worry about what you see. Sometimes we're not going to understand what they're doing. But as we teach them, as we minister to them and empower them, show them the goodness of God, the real power that they have access to, then when they get out there, if they so decide, because I don't know, I'm not speaking that over them neither, I'm not, you know, not that deep with me, I am studying the power of God. But understand that our young people are different. Why? Because we've got phones, technology, we have access to the world. There are so many different influences of a different kind that they are exposed to. So we better make sure that we are tapped into what that's all about and the power of God. I know I'm talking right. It's so important that we don't just throw away the baby with the bathroom. Oh, I'm big one. I'm big one. Him and right and looking a certain way. I'm, I'm big. I was raised a certain way. But I understand that some people just aren't like me. And if I would have been the harvest that God's talking about, I need to make sure I got the right tools. Let me keep going because I'm going to get it. Man's wisdom, God's wisdom. The power that we have as kingdom citizens is power that comes from God. How do we get it? From submitting our lives to Him. So what are we submitting? We are submitting first our abilities. Now you see when we submit our abilities lost just like David did, we can then say the scripture for real, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why? Because I submitted my ability over to him. When I submit my ability, that means I get power to really exercise what I do the right way. Coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. So let's talk about submission real quick. Submission, giving of ourself. Real quick, simple definition. So, of course, giving yourself to who? Who first? First to God. You submit to God. Very important. Our lives, when we get saved, that's what we do. So we teach that. Right? 
OCBT submission to delegated authority. And they can call quite a great difference, didn't they? <laughs> submission to delegated authority yes. is important. Yes. Uh, Amen. Important. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stick right there a little bit, a little bit further, that's a little bit more. Because yes, yes. sometimes we don't agree with stuff, yes. but that doesn't mean you don't submit. Yes. You can disagree and still submit. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Very important. Submission to God, to leadership. Here's the big one. And to each other. Yes. Oh. See, See, don't get mad when Sister Tunnel does the chicken better than you. <laughs> don't get upset. She's got a good woman. Let her cook the chicken. Right. She does it better. <laughs> Everybody likes her chicken. Then they're good. Yeah. Don't get mad. How about you go learn how to make it like her? <laughs> Let her do it. Yeah, take some tips. Don't get jealous. Don't get upset. Submit to her. Let her do it. Somebody else is good at marking the floor. Because they do it with authority. They love it. They're hidden all. They want to see that shine. Right on the floor. Don't get mad. If the bishop is all celebrating them and cheering them along, don't, don't get upset. Don't even have any job. Submit. Be thankful that you're walking on a clean floor. Okay. You see, we can get along better if we learn to submit to each yes. other. I, I, just, I just figured we just need to just love each other a little bit more. Yes. But we can't do it if we think we're better than somebody else. Yes. Okay, all right. Yes. See, that's what submission is. That's really what it's all about. And we can go back to our text in David and find him doing the same things. We found that he first submitted to God. And I'm going to just finish now. He submitted to God. And in the midst of his submission, he was able to find out the real enemies around him. David had some enemies even in his own camp. Good Lord, you'd be surprised who's next to you that really don't like you. Let me keep going, because I don't want to start nothing. I don't know. I'm not going to come and start stuff. I didn't come and start stuff. See, you need to tell people that's growing, that's got your back. See, Dan, see, okay. See, Dan, David, when he got weary, he had a brother come along and fight for his enemy for him. You read it in the text of 2 Samuel. David was dealing with some issues, and he got tired. When you get tired, you need somebody to help you. Okay, you're one damn Christian that just that gets tired. I'm always happy in Jesus. <laughs>
girls like us, you know what I mean, that type of stuff. You know what I mean? So when people, why should you do whatever? Like, sit up, man, relax. Relax. I ain't doing nothing before I, I start Jesus, you know? Just relax. I'm the God of the streets. So you need to make sure you got people around you that celebrate you. That are not jealous of you. That have got your back. Yeah, it's important. It's important to have that kind of network around you because where you're good and where you're good and where all of you all are good are places that God's already set up. It's already worked out for you. You just need to recognize first, He gave you the ability, and secondly, you give Him back His just due in praise and in worship in Him. And with that, the power to do exactly what God has destined you to do will show up in your life. I'm not talking then, I'm talking now. You need the power now. You need to know, first of all, that you actually have it now. So let's talk about that. Then I'm done. The reason why you have enemies, say one more time, that was what God gave me. Because you're a threat. You wouldn't have any enemies unless you're a threat. You and I are not a threat because of our abilities. Let's separate this now. Because it's not about you and I. We are a threat because we have access to the power of God. Oh, I'm talking right. I hope this is settling in your spirit. Because it's doing it for me. I need to understand the access that I have, not the abilities that I've got. Hmm. You see, the enemy, Satan, is after your access. The enemy is after your access. Which is why uh, Roxanne is teaching them about prayer. Because with prayer, you tap into the power of God. With prayer, you, anytime the enemy has stopped you and I from praying, know that you are under serious attack. If you haven't talked to God in a week, know that the attack is mounting on you. You need to make sure that you are tapping into this power on a day-to-day -day basis. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this simply because the enemy is very crafty in his approach and sometimes we miss it because we ain't tapping into the power of God. Is a trickster. Yes. And doing so, we need to make sure that we attack it all the time. Why is he so adamant about it? Because he lost the power. Yes. He lost it. So he don't want you to get it because he knows how important it is to have it. Right. That's why you're going to be attacked so greatly, God. I have to tell you the truth. Because of who you are, because of the righteousness that you will examine and examine and exude, what I mean, demonstrate. Because of this, People aren't really like you. Don't think you think you're better than everybody else. That's the attitude that people see when they see Christians successful. They think they, we think we're better than everybody else. No, we just love the Lord. Amen. And I can apologize for that. I apologize because my daddy is a cattle on a thousand hills. Because he's spoken into existence. Everything that you're not good on here, I can't apologize. I can't apologize because he does exceedingly above all oh, that I am. For oh, he would think I can't apologize. I'm sorry, I just can't apologize. It's been too good to me. Oh, come on, since he woke me up.
walk in power. I just wish we had access to the power. Power of God. Wonder why we don't see the miracles that we should see. You already got it. 
God already told you that it's in you. Father, we receive a fresh. We speak to every generation in this house. Say no more, Satan. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we receive from on high your power, your engrafted power that dwells within, Father, a fresh. God, send a freshness, even now, oh God, from the crown of every hair to the sole of every foot and feet. In the name of Jesus, Father God, from the bishop or the way down to the baby, in the name of Jesus, in this house, a fresh fire order of our son. A fresh fire heritage. Be ready. 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 I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Oh, it's doing it some turning and shifting and moving because the power is in you. It's in you. It's in you. It's in you. God gave it to you. God gave it to you. Father, we receive today. We receive today. Father, we need this place in power to do. Father God, Father, as we praise you, God, from the inside of God, you take residence in our atmosphere, Father, that we might receive even more Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father. Oh, God, you're so worthy also. I am marvelous. I am marvelous. Wonders to perform. We praise you for your excellent greatness. Jesus, we lift you up. Right where you are. Eyes closed. Right where you are. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Keep your hands up. I know I'm working you tonight. But God's doing something in your life. If you could only see it, there are miracles happening. That are dark and red that you don't see. That God shifted and moving right now because of the power that's in you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Father, for that they would sow. That one that's not saved, Father, let the power go get them right now in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, have your way. Ah, Jesus, if you're not here and you don't know Jesus, eyes closed. If you are here and you don't know Christ, I want to invite you now, right now, right now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you're here, wave your hand, don't just wave it, everybody else keep your hands straight up, worship them, pray, you pray, your eyes are closed, all those who already know, but if you don't know, and you're like, all right, I'm going to try God now, that's me, just wave your hands so I can see it, if you wave it, I'll come get you, I'll come get you, if you wave it, I'll come get you. I need to make sure you know that you know your abilities will only take you so far. You need God's power. And it comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible says, but as many have received him, to them he gave their power to become the sons of nothing more than becoming a son of God. Not just a created being, but a son and a daughter. And as you and I, if you're here today, wave it here quick, wave it, wave it. Backslid. And you got your hands up. Say, I, right, preacher, I know God, but in my heart I've been far from him. I need to be tapped back in. That's you, wave your hand. That's you, wave your hand. In your heart, you just know. Between you and God, just wave your hand right where you are. God will meet you. I speak a word over you. That's you. Give your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Almost done. Thank you, Jesus. God's moving. Hallelujah. God's moving. Hallelujah. Somebody's getting healed. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's you. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's speak a word over you. Hallelujah. That's you. Back, back. You know, in your heart, just say, God, I'm heading up. I've seen the power of this courage. Tired of waiting. Is that you? Give your hand. I want to speak a word over you. I just want to speak into your life. Increase it. Yeah. Sometimes you just get tired. That's Christians. Give up. Say, God, I'm tired. Serving you, enough is heaven. Weary. Don't get weary. Thou do. I want to speak that over you. Jesus. Jesus. Father, we thank you for this moment in time. 
Thank you, Father, that you do all things well. Oh, Jesus, do all things well. Thank you, Father. Just take a moment, take your moment, take your moment. For those of us who are here, take your moment. In fact, somebody's getting healed. I don't know who you are. God's touching you. In this presence, is touching you. Whatever's going on that you have concerns about deeply, God's fixing it right now as your hands are submitted to Him. Let this day be another day that you've given it up one more time. Oh, Jesus. Take that time while I pray for this. Caleb was 
80 plus years. So age is no excuse when you got Jesus. Don't believe me, go down and talk to you and let Elijah tell you. Say, oh, you who? I let wisdom speak, but right now it's my turn to speak. He says, I'm like a, 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 a old bottle with blue wine. And he said, that the spirit of the Almighty gives him understanding. No, God gives wisdom to who should have a will if you make yourself available to him. The availability, my God, is ability all by itself. So we thank and praise God today for the word, for the message. So glad to have um, First Lady back. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And I'm sure. She ain't said nothing to me, but I know that Bishop is going to do whatever he can to prepare for this evening. And so he's going to hit the ground running. So, and so if you don't see me now, I'm more than likely he's getting ready and setting things up for uh, the promotion ceremony for our new ministers. Amen? Amen. And those that are being promoted. So they ask that you continue to pray for him, continue to pray for us. And please come back tonight's service, praise God, and let your hearts be blessed. It's going to be a wonderful time. I just like people to be blessed, period, anyway. So if they're getting awards, then I'm getting it too. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. Go. Um, they receive it, I'm receiving too. Uh, because it's all a part of the kingdom. So let us just raise our hands and say, thank God. 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 Reach your neighbor with the right hand of fellowship. <laughs> 